A very good evening and welcome along to the big home show. It was just a six week wait between Gallagher Premiership matches here at King's Home, but it was very much worth the wait. It has been a 28-26 victory for the Cherry and Whites over Harlequins. That wasn't bad everybody, was it? <laughs> Oh, it's good to be back in the Stouffer Press Clubhouse. Welcome along to the Big Home Show. Over the course of the next 20 minutes or so, we will dissect everything that we have seen in the last uh, couple of hours or so, which is a lot, let's face it, between Gloucester Rugby uh, and Harlequins. We'll have the likes of Trevor Woodman on. We'll be getting guests involved as well. We've got a big challenge coming up. And of course, as you can see alongside me, I have two Gloucester legends with us returning once more for the Big Home Show. It is Mark Atkinson, everybody. <laughs> Oh yes, we love you as always, Mark. Um, also making her big home show debut, it is Gloucester Harbury legend and also host of the No Tackle podcast, Millie Wood, everybody! Well, 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 do we have a game to dissect and we were worried that we might be talking about a Gloucester loss around 20 minutes or so ago, but it, instead it's a four try bonus point victory for the Cherry and Whites. They're up to third, by the way, in the Gallagher Premiership. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? Amazing what a couple of wins can do. And Mark, let's start with that. I mean, we mentioned 20 minutes ago, never in doubt, was it? 20 minutes ago, we were cancelling the whole show, weren't we? Um, I think, do you know what? A win's a win after, you you could probably tell we'd had three weeks off. I think that's the, it, it was rusty both sides of the ball, but we got five points out of a team that we've very much struggled against in recent years, so, and sort of hate as well. I think most of the league sort of hate Quinns, so, no, it was well, welcome good. Along and, to any, welcome along to yeah, any Welcome Quinns to any Quinns fans, fans, fans us, or, or just neutrals in the, in the area, but my God, most of the league hate them. Everyone thinks we hate Saris, but really, it's more like Quinns. Excellent stuff. So good to know that we're sitting on the fence for the next 20 minutes or so. Um, Millie, what will that take us into that change room now? We're going to get some reaction shortly. We'll hear from the likes of Lewis Ludlow. But when you've had a victory like that, where it's been so up and down throughout the game, and then those last, two min uh, last 10 minutes was where it was secured, take us into that dressing room now. Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't want to say it, but I think relief is probably the feeling that everyone's going for. Uh, it's becoming a bit of a saying for Gloucester fans, a win's a win. Um, but it really is, and like you say, back into third now. Um, I'm sure the boys are just going to be absolutely bouncing in there. And you mentioned, Mark, that, that, that there was a three-week gap between matches here, and I know that Skiv said that the boys went on holiday for a week and had a bit of time off and whatnot, but that first 20 minutes of the game was pay, played at some tempo, and you actually wouldn't have thought that, it, that the two sides had had a bit of a break. Yeah, I think, you know, it's a Friday, it's a dry Friday night, which you, you're always expecting to see a bit of running rugby, especially against the Quinn side who want to play. And, and I think you could tell we were fresh. You, it's just those sort of minor details that you can see. People are probably coming in out of the team. And, and it was a little rusty, but like Millie alluded to, it, it's five points and, and we've moved up the table, haven't we? We certainly have up to third, as we mentioned. And, and Millie, those last 10 minutes, I think it was, that those two tries were scored to make a 28-26. Um, for you, was there anything in particular that changed in intensity or, or, or anything that particularly Gloucester were doing? Um, I, I just think... Santi Carreras, whatever he's being paid isn't enough. Um, he's our golden ticket at the moment. He, he gets paid, honestly, he gets paid <laughs> close to enough. He definitely... All right, I'll take your word for I it. I can confirm that he gets paid enough, honestly. Uh, I did see he was on holiday in the week, so... Uh, Mauritius. Oh. Mauritius. Five-star resort in Mauritius. He gets paid enough. Definitely. Yeah. Okay, I'll take that back then. Uh, getting Reece Zammett on the ball, I mean, as a back myself, you just want to see the backs running with the ball, don't you? Forwards are great, you know, doing their thing and whatever, but let's get the backs running with the ball, kicking, and there we I've, are. I definitely, I think we'll probably see more of that younger Welsh Academy lad who came on. Oh, yeah. He's got, I think he's got a bright future. Um, he's definitely worth, like you said, he's definitely worth getting the ball every now and again. When we saw his first touch back after three months out, whenever he's been out, honestly, Gatlin sat at home, chuffed to bits, isn't he? Because the Welsh need a spark at the moment and the state of that bloke. He is, he's a cheat code. Between the two of them that you mentioned, they're both cheat codes. So essentially get them the ball as often as you can in space. Well, I mean, I mean, I mean we did get them, we, get, we got Lewis the ball immediately when he came on. I mean, that disallowed try, but Millie, that, what a finish. I, I don't think I've ever seen anyone come on quite so quickly and nearly score a try. I think we're just expecting it these days, aren't we? We're just thinking, oh, he's going to come on, no one's going to expect it, get him the ball, and he's going to do something absolutely ridiculous in the corner. Unfortunately, his knees were a little bit too low today, but I think like everybody else, we weren't expecting it to be disallowed because most other times it is just some miracle try. And Millie, just before we let you go, one on, uh, one on Gloucester Hartbury as well. We've got to talk to you about Gloucester Hartbury because it is a good time to be a rugby fan in these parts. Gloucester Hartbury, top of the league, unbeaten. Um, for you, how impressive have they been this season? You watch a lot of them. 
the girls have been incredible. You know, my sell tonight was going to be, if you want to see a successful Gloucester team, then come and watch the girls. But the boys have pulled out as well. But 10 out of 10 wins. Um, the girls are playing here next Saturday, 25th, against Saris. It'll be a hell of a game. Tickets are dirt cheap. You, there's no excuse to not be here. Come and watch the girls. Santi Carreras will buy them all for you. Yeah, Santi, Santi, will will buy get them. Santi can buy anyone a ticket you want. Okay? Just let Santi know, he'll buy you a ticket. And we must mention as well, this has been the warm-up for, for next week for you because the No Tackle podcast that you that you host is doing a live debut here at King's Home next next Wednesday as well, I believe. Yeah, I'm taking some tips off you this evening on uh, Don't do that. Post Supreme. Don't do that. Um, yeah, so we, we have a No Tackle podcast on the BBC. It's all about women's rugby in Gloucestershire. Um, episodes are only half an hour long you get to know all the girls in the Gloucester team and all about grassroots so if you've got any young females in your family that might want to listen mums dads it's all for you BBC Sounds app Apple Podcasts wherever you want to find it no tackle lovely stuff I don't need to do any plugging after you've done that excellent stuff Millie listen lovely to see you um, good luck with the No Tackle podcast last week and up the Gloucester Harbury as well give it up for Millie Wood everybody <laughs> So our first guest on the Big Home Show, if you are just joining us, by the way, across social media, welcome Gloucester have beaten Harlequins by 28 points to 26 here at King's Home. They're up to third in the Gallagher Premiership and a man that orchestrated certainly that first try, maybe not the backs quite so much, but a World Cup winner with us this evening. We have the scrummaging coach for Gloucester Harbury. Please make you some noise for Trevor Woodman, everybody. Go on, Big Trev, we're here. Gloucester royalty in the bill. Look at him. Hey. Good to see you, Trev. Sorry, I didn't stand there. Couldn't be bothered. Uh, <laughs> like, just listen. to confirm, we said that he'd like to be addressed by his full title at Sorry. all times. As you, as, you, as you were, his full title at all times, please. M MBE, I should say. Trevor, listen, welcome to the Big Home Show. Uh, first things first, everyone here wants to know the most important thing. What do you think of our chairs? Can I take one home with me? Sure, yeah, we've been asked that many a time. We're yeah. going to need a bigger budget, but yeah, we'll give you one, absolutely. Um, listen, Trevor, <laughs> Millie, Millie was just with us. Mark has just been with us as well, haven't been into the dressing room. You have. Tell us what it's like. Yeah, look, um, obviously we're very excited. We got the five points. That was, that was really important. Um, when you're, you know, Quinns and obviously next week, Northampton, um, we're all... We're all very close in the league, so that was important. I think the players are, obviously it's a bit bittersweet, isn't it, with Harlequins coming away with that try right at the end, which gives them those two points. But look, there's a lot of hard work gone in in the last two, three weeks without having any rugby. Um, and that was a solid performance in that last 20. You know, we got, we got behind, but then, you know, we didn't panic. You know, a bit of stardust by, you know, Santi and, and Zam. And, you know, we got ourselves back in front. And what was the talk at half-time? 14-7 up. We mentioned that the game was played at a pretty high tempo in that first half. Uh, in terms of the second half, did you want to continue that? What was, what was the chat? Yeah, you know, it was, all, it was all about, you know, George was very animated at, at half-time and it was, um, you know, making sure that we got our processes right, we got our basics right. And it was also about how much do we ultimately want it? You know, how much do we want to go out there the next 40 minutes? We're playing at home, we're in front of a sellout crowd. How much do we actually want it? How much do we want to prove to these people that turned up tonight that, that we want to push for the, the top honours? Trev, Trev they've, um, Quinns have been one of those teams for us, haven't they, over the last few years that we've we sort of struggled against, niggly games that have always sort of gone against us. And, and as a developing team, which we are, you know, the trajectory is going up. And, do you think that we're going to get more from winning a game like that rather than running away with it and, and scoring 30 points at home on a Friday? You'd, you'd expect the, the talk on Monday to be sort of about, about learnings rather than just, just winning a game, wouldn't you? Yeah, look, look, they've been our bogey team. I think it was eight games. We haven't, we haven't beat them. So, um, you know, already like sitting here as, as a coach, I'm thinking about what we're going to do to get better next week. You know, massive problem tonight was our breakdown. You know, probably seven, eight plus turnovers at the breakdown. You know, ideally you operate three and below. So that was a massive concern for us tonight. So, um, and you know, some, it's, sometimes it's good to have something to fix, you know, to fix. It's sometimes it's good. You get your five points and you still got work on so we can get better. And there's a couple of players that we've got to talk about this evening. Let's start with Seb Blake, shall we? First start at hooker for the Cherry and Whites this evening and a try uh, to get things started for Gloucester as well. What a way, I bet you're delighted. That's the perfect start, isn't it? 
Uh, it is it, nothing really phases him to be honest. Like he's sometimes you sometimes you don't even think he's all there. Like he turns up and yeah, you know, I had to have a word with him last year about is there any chance you could do your boot laces up before we actually start training? Because he he'll <laughs> he'll that be. That is the thing. Do you do that as well? Do you have your laces not done up for training? Because I see a lot of players. It's the cool players that do it. So yeah, I assume you do. It's the cool. It's the cool one. So I, I tie my laces. Are you tired? Uh, and Trev tells us off. I scared of Trev a little bit. So I've always taught, tied my laces. But I try. Trev, he is one of those players, isn't he? You're not sure what's quite going on behind the eyes. Are you? He's, he's relaxed, to say the least. Yeah, he's very laid back, you know, and and that's that's not a bad thing either. I think, you know, the belief he'll get from this game is should you know send him, you know, up the next level or two because you never know as a young player coming through. You don't really know, you know, are you going to cope at that level? Are you going to be able to survive? You know, and you know he shined, didn't he? He was outstanding. Could you just explain sort of the. The comms that might be happening between um, Seb Blake, obviously we've just discussed youngster coming through. You're looking to your left, looking to your right. You've got a Georgian bloke who doesn't speak to half the squad and a Russian bloke who doesn't speak to the other half of the squad. How is that dynamic? You've been seeing them up front this week, haven't you? How's that dynamic work between the three oddballs at the front? <laughs> I think at most front row, they're all very odd. So you just get used to it, don't you? So it's just telepathic, isn't it? You don't. The front row are a weird bunch and, um, and we definitely got a few of them. Well, if we, if we go from, from a man who you mentioned was making his first start for the Cherry and Whites this evening to a man who was getting his 100th cap in Valrapava Ruskin, um, let's hear it for Valrapava Ruskin, everybody, because that was some achievement. And, and some performance as well after your 100th cap for, for the Cherry and Whites. Um, explain to us how instrumental he is in that team and also what he's like to coach as well. He said instrumental, not mental. Instrumental. He said instrumental. Um, you can answer either. Instrumental, Trevor. I, th I think it's, it's been very much a love-hate relationship with, with Val at times. Um, you know, you sort of like give him what you want him what you want him to do for the team, and sometimes he'll go off and do do his own thing. But this year, he's really bought into to what we're about, especially in and around the scrum. And you know, he's been outstanding. You know, there's a reason why our scrum has been as good as what it's been this year and it's because of Val buying into it. Um, you know, and look, he's, he is a physical freak. This, the things he can do um, around the field defensively at the breakdown, you know, the ball carry. And then, look, he's, he's done 80 minutes tonight. You know, Seb Blake's do, done 80 minutes. You know, it just goes to show how fit he is, what a physical specimen he is. And, you know, you don't see many front rows do that nowadays. And he's also someone that, that you, you don't really necessarily think that he would have 100 caps to his name, because we still see him as someone who's quite young um, and playing the game. How important has he suddenly become this season for Gloucester? Mark, you can probably come into this one as well, given that we're now up to third in the league. How influential are people like him that have played for a little while, but nonetheless still have that kind of young energy that they're bringing to the side? I, I think uh, Trev touched on it. it. It's not that we've we've always known, and he's done it in fits and starts over the years. We've seen him do a half an hour here and there where he's just been, he's been devastating at times. The reason we signed him was pretty openly. We went up to Worcester and he just ruined our game, didn't he? We, we, he took four breakdown penalties off us in the first half. And I think David Humphrey signed him there and then. But, and he's done it at times. We've seen him do it for two or three games. He's, he's massively bought into what we're doing and then he's, he's taken teams apart. But this year, the last couple of years actually, we've just seen him switch into everything we've done and, he, and you, see, you see the results and, and how good. It pains me to say, but my God, he's been brilliant for us. And just before we let you go, Trev, I uh, want to ask, uh, we mentioned, Skiv mentioned that you guys had a week off. How did you spend your week off? What was your holiday? Mauritius, Mauritius with Santi. I'd love to have been Mauritius. No, I went down to Cornwall. I saw the folks down in Cornwall. Um, hadn't been yeah, down there big for, fun, big fun. for a little while because obviously our week off over the Christmas New Year period got took off us. So it was, um, it was quite nice to just have a few days in Cornwall when there was no one else down there and it was the perfect setting, really. So what you're saying is you hate people, really, yeah. Well, it just, it's that silly six season. Yeah. We just hate the Emmets, don't we? Yeah. That's it. <laughs> Lovely stuff. Trevor Litchin, congratulations. Enjoy that one in the dressing room this evening. Great to see you. Give it up for Trevor Woodman, MBE, everybody. Thank you, Trev. Congratulations, making his big home show debut. Right, still to come on the big home show, we're going to wrap up things that we've been seeing here at King's Home. 28 26 the score between uh, the Cherry and Whites and Harlequins. We're going to chat to the Cherry and Whites captain, Lewis Ludlow, very, very shortly. But of course, it was a sellout once more at King's Home this evening. Give it up for the sellout, everybody. 
and that is that is also eight uh, eight victories in the last ten matches here at King's Home. So these these results would not be possible without the Cherry and Whites faithful, and of course the iconic Gloucester chant that has been going on as well. And we are going to get you involved very very shortly. But if you're a little bit confused as to what the Gloucester chant is, as if you could be, it's becoming a bit iconic, really. So the standards are very high for the Gloucester charts, uh, uh, chance. So we're going to get four lucky contestants up to the front here at the Big Home Show. We've got our leaderboard ready as well to write their scores on. So let's give it up for our first contestant, Neil. Up you come. Give it up for Neil. Hey, welcome to the stage, Neil. Hello, Neil. Hi. Take a seat. Welcome along to the Big Home Show. First things first, reaction to that win? Oh, fantastic. We only come here to see him win. And out of, and the, they four, don't disappoint. Out of the four tries, which one's your fave? Um, be honest, not that mauling shit. Don't worry about uh, that. Yeah, come on, Santi Carreras at the end. Yeah, Santi yeah. definitely. We'll go I mean, with that. Eased the nerves a bit, didn't it? <laughs> really eased the nerves, didn't it? So Neil, very very simple. This we need you to do a Gloucester chant. You will get points from Mark here for the strength and also the duration. That's an important part. So ready on my countdown? Okay. Okay. Three, two, one. Neil, go for it. What a start! What a start, Neil! That was Follow exceptional. Follow that, hey, Neil, hey, do you stand in the shed often? You get yourself across there, Neil. Yeah, you've just been watching, haven't you? Your time, Neil, thirteen point four seven seconds. And Mark, what are you going to give it for strength? Neil, Neil, that was—I'd say it was a nine on the strength scale. You, oh, you, you. you look like you were sort of about to pop a vein. This one here has not gone down yet, so we're still a bit. If we've got a medic in the house, Neil will pop and see you in the corner. Not bad at all. Give it up for Neil, everybody. First, first and last on our leaderboard. Good stuff, Neil. Uh, next up, we have Mish. Give it up for Mish, everyone. Hello, Mish. Oh, you got a drink as well. Good to see. Chop Good to see. Pie, Hello, Mish. Go on, get it down you before that'll lube you up, honestly. Don't use that term, Mark. Don't use it. Not in public. It Just whatever so you want well. to do. Whatever. No forceful here. Mish, uh, you, you've got quite a high standard to live up to there. How confident you are you feeling? You intimidated. You've got you to use your mic, remember. Don't, don't everyone. Mic. Oh, you're Does, getting it ready. Just need the mic. No. Doesn't need the mic. Okay. Just right. The mic. You got the fans, haven't you? Mish, you have 13, 13 and a bit seconds Look to beat. You're a crowd you're a crowd You've got a lot of support from the crowd. In three, two, one. Gloucester! Oh, oh, Mish! Mish, Mish, you're not going to believe this. You had 13.47 to beat. You got 13.47. Mish, what? what's all that about? For a second there, you, you weren't in the room for a second. Did you, were you aware of that? You, what, you no, sort of no, possessed no. for a little minute. You, you sort of went into a different area, didn't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. The eyes went, didn't they? Very. Ha have you, Mish, can you do a hacker as well while you're here? Because no, no, don't really do it. But your eyes. I, I think Mish would. Have you got some kiwi in you? What are you getting it for strength, Mark? Just before we let Mish go. Right, what are you giving it for strength? Do you know, again for the aggression. I'm, I feel intimidated. If I don't give it a nine, I feel like I'm going to sort of have the the devil that was possessing nine? Mish. Yeah. It was okay, another, nine. Right, we're level. It was an angry nine. Level. Good stuff. All right. Next up, our third contestant is Jane. Everybody. Jane. Oh, Jane. 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 Absolutely Jane. No pressure. Oh, I bet you're pleased you said yes to this after those first contestants. Yeah, well, you'll be fine. Listen, strength, duration, they're the key things. Jane, to take the lead on the Gloucester Chant leaderboard in three, two, one, go! Gloucester! Oh, not bad. Not bad. Oh. That felt impressive. So it you felt just needed, long. The, you needed the, the devil that possessed okay. me before. It wasn't around you. I could sense that the devil had left. But Listen, James. This leaderboard, like this leaderboard is so close. 13.47 to beat. 13.42. Oh. 
This is like a this is like an F1 qualifying lap. Jane, listen, congratulations, good to see you. We'll see you soon. Give it up for Jane, everybody. Okay, our fourth and final contestant is Emma, everybody. Give it up for Emma. Hello, Emma. Lovely stuff. Right, Emma, how how are the nerves? How's the confidence? I mean, I've got hard acts to follow, but I think I'll be okay. Yeah, okay. I think I'll be okay, okay. All right, Emma, you've got 13.47 seconds to beat. In three, two, one. She needs your help, everybody, go. Emma, are you Emma? Are you a singer? <laughs> a professional. What? You had the wobble going. I'm nervous. <laughs> As a professional Gloucester, I don't know that was a job, but if there was a job, that's that's taken it, hasn't it? Oh my word, wow. Emma! Listen, you absolutely smashed it. 19.19. You were the top of our leaderboard. Wow. Good stuff. Right, Good. just before Good. just before we get the Cherry and White's captain on, uh, we do have a fifth contestant, of course, and uh, and he's right to my left, Mark Atkinson. Oh. Sorry, I've thrown you straight under the bus there. I reckon Aki has it in him. I reckon he does. Are we ready for Aki? I usually, I can't okay. often hear e Eeyore. The yeah. chant I get a lot yeah, is Eeyore yeah. when I'm playing, not this one. So. You'll be all right. Yeah, in okay. three, he needs your support. In three, two, one, go on Aki. I've got nothing I left. Think we've peaked. Robbie, I've got nothing left. I don't think it gets much better from here on in, I must admit. 20.47. seconds. Where are we? Did seconds. we win? Did we win? Yeah, you're only at the top of the leaderboard of your own blooming thing. Brilliant, that's good. That, uh, Jane and Mish and Emma are delighted about that. Aki, good stuff. Right, uh, okay, listen, by the way. By the way, there has been a rugby match happening this evening. Don't know if you missed it. That was the main game that took place there, but there was a rugby match uh, that happened before. And Gloucester Rugby have beaten Harlequins by 28 points to 26. And it is now time to introduce the man who orchestrated that win, who led his side to third in the Gallagher Premiership as things stand. It is your Cherry and Wise captain. It is Lewis Ludlow, everybody. Lewis, 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 good to see you. Oh my word, you've got a bloody knee. You look a little battered and bruised. It's not your debut on the, on the Big Home Show, but welcome, 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 welcome. Um, my word, did you see Aki? First thing we've got to talk about was Aki just then. Did you see that? I, I did see it, yeah, I did. <laughs> That's, that's not even half of it, what he's really got. Excellent. He's not called the greatest showman for nothing. That's so something, something to look forward there, to. There's then. a lot still to come there. You just, just brush the surface. Look, look at the state of this. This is doing rugby no good whatsoever, is it? Look, what, what do you we're mean? saying to parents, like, let your kids play. Look at the state of you. Well, that, that's are we not normal. Are we like, appreciate this. The man does 40 tackles a game, goes unnoticed and comes on the stage looking like this. <laughs> right, this is your captain, isn't it? This is a oh, captain. Yeah, it's a captain. I mean, he Thank looks you. hanging. He looks <laughs> hanging, doesn't he? But that's your captain. In, in all seriousness, though, Lewis, um, listen, that victory was, was something else, wasn't it? Take yeah. us into, take us onto that pitch in the last ten minutes or so. It, it was, uh, it was like the, the more, more so the last like three or four minutes where we scored. You sort of go, I think it was nine points up, but you are just playing Quins. You know you've not won it, and it, it's like a. Even more so, most teams there, like you're, you're going back, you're exiting, you're fine, you play through the last two, two or three minutes, that team would be a bit broken. Those boys, they, they just don't know when they've lost. Um, and that's why they've won, we spoke about it in the week, they win so many games they shouldn't win. Um, and, and that would have been a travesty if they'd have won that one because we, we did control it, we, we let ourselves down with a few pens that let them in, um, didn't really break us down properly in D, um, and we didn't really launch well. So it was just a great five points to come away with at the end of it, I think. You, you, said we, you just touched on it then. We, we're probably, we had three weeks off, haven't we? And it, yeah. probably, it probably showed 
it, we were, we were a, little, a little bit rusty both sides of the ball. There probably wasn't, Trev talked about Skiv sort of lighting up at half time. Probably wasn't quite the bite in D. No, no, it wasn't. And, and we were a bit like, for us, we're normally, you know, with Dom coaches at low, one low, one high. We probably a bit chesty, a bit upright, letting them get a few momentum carries, which you compare that to the Chiefs' deep performance, which was after sort of five or six games rolling where everyone knew their role. We'd been into like game week, game week, game week. But then the beauty of it, obviously we've won. We can learn a huge amount. You know, we've tried a few new things in attack. We can look back at them and then really go hard again against Northampton next week. And the thing is there, you mentioned that you've, you've actually learned a lot from this performance and it's all good when we sit here. I remember we sat here after the Northampton game and you, we had a blinder and, and Gloucester were the better side by a mile. Does it feel like this evening, does it actually feel a little bit more satisfying because Gloucester weren't necessarily at their best tonight? No, yeah, that's that, yeah it is. And, that, and that's what we said in the change room then. It was like, you, you take your five points there, but wow, we've, we've got so much to, like, it's exciting because you can go back and review on Monday and be like, well, this, 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 and this weren't good enough, and we've still got five points. Thanks to, you know, there's a couple of freaks out there that, that sort us out, um, and, a, and a driving mall that does the job. So it's, it's something nice to fall back on. You, took, you said that, right? So how many, how many times over the years have we, we've sat here after games, probably come on the wrong side of a few games, and we sit there and we say, we'll take the learnings, we're gonna kick on, we're gonna do this, but I just think the change in mindset for us to be able to go now and go, we've won a game, we got five points. Years ago, we'd have gone, that's amazing, everyone celebrate that victory. Yeah. Now we sit here and go like, do you know what? It was okay, wasn't it? It was, it was, a, yeah. sted, it was a steady enough victory. It, it's, it's one of them, you're looking at it, you're going, it's, it's job done. It's yeah. not like, you're not going out and, going ecstatic because you've beat Harley. Like It's the first time I've beaten Quinns, ever. So, I, I, you know, in theory, you should be buzzing, but like you say, it's, it's more, speaking to the coaches then, it's, it's more that excitement of, wow, we didn't get a huge amount right and we've still, you know, we've still got five points. Like, imagine when we get stuff right and, and do what we should do and after a week of playing, you're back into it now, you, your body's used to the collisions again and, and you're ready to go. All right, what about that? Um what about that, that young Welsh kid that came on? We just touched on him before. That young Welsh kid and that Argentinian lad. Oh, he's, he, he came back from Mauritius, didn't he? Well rested. He, I said about his five-star trip to Mauritius. Lutz didn't go five-star to Mauritius, did you? Went to Stroud for the week, I, I didn't you? I went to Stroud and started yeah. fencing and digging yeah. holes. Um, but that, yeah, that's, we're different people, aren't we? Different, we're, diff we're different people. Different people. Different holes for different pegs. Different drinks for different um, people. But yeah, it is, you know, it's nice when you're in a game and you're watching those two, like, it's such a shame that trial wasn't given because that would have just summed it up that he comes back from, what, six, seven weeks off his first touch of the ball and it's a worldy finish. Um, but it, it's, it's a pleasure to play with those guys when you know that if there's a little bit of a break and you give them some space, it's, it's, just, it's, it's fun to watch. Just touch, just touch on that. It, it wasn't a worldy finish, was it? Because we've got to keep him grounded, and no, he didn't yeah, finish sorry. it. No, he didn't so finish it. Yeah. It was a worldy uh, break. What we'll keep reminding him, we'll keep. We will keep him humble by yeah. keep telling him that it wasn't a finish. So a world, a world class winger would have finished it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. What would Penno have done, Sam? It finished that sort it. of thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. James Lowe finished it. Listen, lads, we're gonna we're gonna ask you to stay there uh, for a little bit longer, but we're gonna get someone else. We're gonna get one of your teammates up on stage because we already have one centre with us, of course. But it's time to bring up another centre. It's time Aki. to bring up the Stoker Press the player Aki. of the match. It is. Seb Atkinson, everybody. <laughs> carrying, a, carrying a crate of Stofa Press on brand. He's got no shoes on. Come up, Seb. <laughs> Pop down your, your crate. There we go. Oh, look at that. Product placement at its finest. Seb, congratulations. Thank welcome. You. Welcome Cheers. to the big home show. Uh, it's nice yeah. to have two centres up here, by the way, as well. Yeah, no, it's nice. It's really Just, nice. Yeah. It's nice to have Lutz as well. Don't forget Lutz. No, we, we would never forget Aki, Lutz. Aki, Mark. That's Fine. what's happened. That's what's suddenly Aki happened. Now, Mark. I'm now referred to as Mark, this, and he's taken he's Aki. Mark now. This I'm is okay. Aki. I'm okay with it. I'm fine. He deserves it. Not at all. <laughs> hey, listen, Seb. Five points against Harlequins, up to third in the Gallagher Premiership, and your player of the match. Not a bad Friday night. Yeah, pretty good. I think if I'd uh, set out some goals for tonight, those would be uh, on the top of the list, so it's a good, good, good game. And hey, we've, we've spoken a little bit about those last 10 minutes at length, um, but from a back's point of view, it was quite the last 10 minutes, wasn't it? And, it? and it felt like it was, it kind of felt like it was coming for a little while. Yeah, definitely. I think it was a very scrappy game for us and we, we, we could have been a lot better in certain parts, but it showed that 
when we, we just stuck to what we said um, and then it comes off. So we've just got to stick to what we do and we thought we'd get the opportunities that we, and we did. Seb, most of, most of Quinn's attack, obviously without Marcus playing, without a few of their other players, a lot of it usually comes from Danny Kerr and Esther Hazen, doesn't it? Esther Hazen will be getting back on that bus tonight going, who is that young kid who kept chopping me down? How are your shoulders feeling firstly? And how was that first experience against Esther, Esther Hazen? Yeah. And, and are your pockets full? No, no. I mean, it was good to, to play against someone like that. I, I actually played my first game for Worcester against him last year, um, and he definitely had the upper hand on me that game. So You played for Worcester, though. Don't worry about that. I know, that. Yeah. I know. That's don't, don't hold, that. We won't hold that against you. Yeah, yeah so it was good to, to, get my, to get my own back on him. Um, and yeah, I was happy. And of course, it was, it, it, you, you've come over to Gloucester um, this season. How much are you enjoying it? And, and an evening like that, we've mentioned the home form of, for the Cherry and Whites. That's eight out of the last 10 victories at home um, here at King's Home. How good is it to be playing out there in front of a full house? And also, how important for those last 10 minutes as well? Because we could hear it in here. We could, hear, we could really hear the stands starting to get behind the boys. Yeah, definitely. I, you can't experience anything like this anywhere else. And it really, really helps us. Thing. In those last 20, 10, 15 minutes, it was just like having another, another man on our team. Um, really pushed us, sort of to put in the big hits, push the extra yards. Um, and it's just, it's just good fun at the end of the day to play in, such, in front of such a good crowd. And for you, Luz, is it in some, in some ways a little frustrating? Like you haven't played a Gallagher Premiership match here for six weeks. Um, in, in that time, I know you've had a, a bit of a break. How hard was it in the lead up to this game to come in with high tempo, with fluency, especially when you're playing against a team like Quinns, who you know are going to come and play a high tempo game of rugby? Yeah, it, it is. It is difficult, but I think we had a well, we had a proper training week last week, didn't we? It was we we're in some serious holes in a couple of sessions. It was it was awful, to be honest with you. Um, you don't look forward to those training weeks when you're when you're playing mid like mid season. You think you might get a little nice rest or they tried last year they tried to taper us off and that didn't work so this year we're just going to get fitter and stronger um so it was but it worked you know it does work you've sort of done us though haven't you because people see these gaps in the season and as you said as players sort of see them and go oh that'll be a that'll be a nice week yeah. but the fact that boys went out tonight and put a performance in yeah suggests that the coach has got it right which is going to kill us later down the line for yeah, more, yeah. Hard, we'll for more hard work so five shed sessions a week so exactly you know, yeah just, just more and more just get you in can't the well. win you can't win really just, just get yeah. in the well like johnny said every day is a shed day yeah Listen, uh, congratulations, Lewis. Congratulations, Seb, uh, on being player of the match and the win, of course. Um, just quickly, how does the next couple of days look? How does the night look? Very, Maybe an easier question. Very different for me. I'm, I'm going to look at a little Land Rovers tomorrow. Um, Stop trying to sell your Land Rovers. Land Rovers. No fencing. We've got Seb coming in with Seb's his Seb's probably going to um, chop them and enjoy himself. Nah, a glass of milk before bed, I think. Absolutely, of course. Wouldn't want it any other way. Uh, listen, thank you very much indeed, gents. Uh, thank you to all of our other guests as well. We've had Millie Wood on the show. Give it up for Millie, everybody. Yeah. We've had Trevor Woodman as well. Give it up for Trevor Woodman, everyone. MBE, MBE. Trevor Woodman, MBE. And MBE. Christ. And also, we've had, of course, our wonderful contestants on the Gloucester Chant game, which needs some work on the title to that. But give it up for them all as well. And of course, of course, I would not leave out the wonderful Mark Atkinson. Aki, as always, a pleasure. Lovely to see you. Thank you, Robbie. We'll see you well done, soon. Uh, yeah, give it up for Aki, everyone. Come on. Come on. The poor bloke has to sit next to me for 20 minutes. Um, and thank you so much to you for listening as well. Uh, Millie Wood, of course, was on at the start of the show. A reminder, next rugby here at King's Home is a week tomorrow. It is Gloucester Hartbury who are absolutely flying, taking on Saracens, the defending champions of the Allianz Premier 15s. Uh, it is finished here at King's Home, 28 points to 26 for the Cherry and Whites. They are up to third in the Gallagher Premiership. And if you would like to be back here next year, which I think you would after that performance, 2023, 24 memberships are on sale now. Now, take a look at this. A lot has changed since we were founded in 1873. Since we sold our first season ticket. Since we printed the first programme. Since we heard the first crowd cheer. Gloucester! Favourites to win today and favourites of the crowd. Since we followed our first captain. Since we brought home our first trophy. But some things haven't changed, like the King's Home Faithful and the roar of the shed. Sign up now for the 2023-24 season. There's 150 years of rugby history in our blood. Be there when more history is made.